Estonia's projected vertical outputs from a point A would speed U meters per second. After projection, the stone moves freely under gravity until it returns to A. The time between the instant that the stone is projected and the instant that it returns to A is 3 and 4 sevenths of a second. Or 3 and 4 sevenths seconds. Modelling the stone as a particle, show that U equals 17 and a half. Find the greatest height above A reached by the stone. Find the length of time for which the stone is at least 6 and 3 fifths meters above A. So I've got the question summarized here. There's not we're not assuming any air resistance, so it falls under the effect of gravity, which we know is g acting vertically downwards as an acceleration. So if it goes up with a certain speed, it's going to come down with exactly the same speed, isn't it here? So we know it's going to come down also with speed u. Okay, so we know the total time is 3 and 4 sevenths, so let's have a look at that. So part A then, we'll use um, the equations of motion then. So we know the final and initial velocities, and we know the time. So V equals U plus AT. Um, Yeah, v squared equals u squared. Uh, sorry, v equals u plus at, I think is the one to use, isn't it? So v equals u plus at gives. So let's apply that in the upwards direction then. The final velocity is downwards with u, so that's minus u. The initial velocity is upwards with u plus a. Upwards, the acceleration is minus g times the time. And we know the time is, total time is 3 and 4 sevenths. As a fraction, that's 21 plus 4 is 25 sevenths. So that tells us then, if we move this over there, and we move the u over here, we'll write it from right to left, 2u is equal to 25g over 7. Let's just check that. The 25g over 7 can go over there to plus 25g over 7. The minus u comes to be with this u to give 2u equals that. And we've written it down from right to left. So that tells us what u is then. It's 25g. The 2 comes from times to divide over 14. So u is equal to... Um, Okay, let's just tap it in the calculator then. 25 times the 9.8 divided by the 7 equals 35. 25 times 9.8 divided by 14, rather, is what I should have written down, shouldn't I? 14 equals 17.5, which is what we wanted. 17.5 meters per second. So there's U then for part A. Now part B. Shh, find the height. Well, here's the top height, isn't it? H. We can label it H. Um, and that's the vertical height. We know here that V is equal to naught. We know the acceleration. We know the initial speed. So we can use the other equation of motion, can't we? Another one. The other one is V squared equals U squared plus 2as, we can use this one, can't we? Gives, and that will give the height. Final velocity is naught. The initial velocity, we now know is 17.5 squared, plus 2a, the acceleration is minus g times s, and s is the height, so should we, let's put in the height. S is H, so that tells us that 2GH then. Move this across to plus is 17.5 squared. And that tells us the height then, isn't it? So H is equal to 17.5 squared. And move the 2G from times down to divide. So tap that in the calculator then. We've already got that in the calculator, so we'll square it and divide that by bracket 2 times g 
bracket equals decimal 15.625 or as a fraction it's 125 over 8 which as a decimal was 15 so we know it's 15 15 eighths are 120 so that's 5 eighths is the height in meters okay so there's the height find the time total time for which the stone is above this height okay so the, let's look at that then we'll use the formula s is equal to because this is the height in terms of the time ut plus a half a t squared so use this formula then uh, gives now when is the height bigger than 6.6 .6. let's put that down so ut is 17.5 t plus acceleration is minus g isn't it upwards minus 9.8 over 2 is minus 4.9 so I'm putting that down straight away as a decimal so here's our ut a was minus 9.8 times a half is 4.9 the minus of course t squared um, now this is the height when is the height bigger than or equal to six and three fifths wasn't it 6.6 .6. okay so let's just move this as a move this over to be plus 4.9 t squared minus 17.5 t plus the 6.6 .6 is less than or equal to zero so that's what we've got then as a quadratic now this is a positive quadratic if we were to draw this quadratic as a function it might look something because it's a positive it's a u-shaped curve so here and here is when it's below um, less than naught so for what time is this less than naught then if we can find out when this time for which this is less than naught then this will tell us when this is value here is greater than 6.6 .6, because we've just re um, um, realized the inequality rearranged the inequality so this is root 1 this is root 2 so the difference between the roots well if you remember quadratic formula solution is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so the difference between the roots beta minus alpha then is equal to now this value if you split the fraction up it'll be that is a constant plus or minus this fraction so it goes forward this amount and backwards this amount so if we double this this root will be the different this value will be the difference double this then because you're going forwards that amount and backwards that amount so if we just do two of these then we'll get root b squared minus 4ac twice the two will cancel with the two underneath so that's what we want to work out then so this gives answer to equal uh, b squared is 17.5 minus squared it's just 17.5 squared then minus 4 times a 4.9 times c is 6.6 .6, uh, square rooted so b squared minus 4 a times c all over to all over a rather which is 4.9 so we just type this in the calculator then square root of 17.5 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times 6.6 .6 equals that's the square root divide that by 4.9 19 over 7 so that's 2 um, 
14, 19 is 5 sevenths more, isn't it? Seconds. Seconds. 2 and 5 sevenths. And if we look at the question, uh, yeah, it doesn't tell us what the answer is, but we're fairly happy that's the answer then.